Hello friends and family, welcome back to the channel. Today we are exploring our pond ecosphere five years after it was set up. This is a huge accomplishment for me because the tank is beautiful. Five years of being completely sealed within a one gallon jar, we have a beautiful little world that has come into being. Now over those five years, we discovered some very interesting sights in here. Four years ago, I got this great shot of our boogie worms, for lack of a better term, uh, feeding on the substrate. They are looking for mulm and little bits of plant material, anything they could eat. It was really cool to see them doing that. Two years ago, we had a significant growth spurt of our plants in here, and that resulted in many wilted and dying plants afterwards. Here's a look at the lid from 2019, <laughs> as it was sealed on day one with a little label that I created. And here's that same lid and label today. Five years later, the lid is very corroded and the label is completely faded. I might have to make a new label, I don't know. But it looks like the lid is going to fail before the life does inside of the jar. I think that's really cool. Taking a moment to examine the jar as it sits right now and it's beautiful inside. We have a lot of spike rush in here and some of our semi-aquatic moss is still living within. I think the fast growing nature of the spike rush coupled with the slow and steady growth of the moss has resulted in a beautiful balance point here within this sealed project. And I know what you're saying, wow, I don't see any animals in here. Well, we'll have to look a little bit closer, but first I wanna check out the bottom layer, the substrate. We have just a tiny little bit of mulm in here, so much less than we did in the past, which is really crazy. So that mulm is being chewed up and digested by something, most likely a strong bacteria culture inside. But the tank itself is beautiful, and I could not ask for better results after five years sitting sealed on my windowsill. So as an ecosphere guy, I am very strict about this. I do not open these tanks, and uh, I really can't. If I were to open this today, it would result in exposure to all of our friends that we've found over the last five years which would result in a catastrophic crash of this ecosystem, especially our green water. If it made contact with this nano aquarium, it would turn everything green, everything would crash, and it may grow back into a form of balance eventually, but it would be really crazy. But as it is, our spike rush is thriving in here. Hopefully you see why I've been using spike rush in many of our recent projects. I told you that it powers many of my ecospheres and I was not joking. This is the main source of life within the tank. By growing, spreading, consuming material, and dying, wilting, and providing food, our spike rush is constantly filtering the water while also becoming a food source for our pets. It's a beautiful balancing point. And looking closely here, you'll see a ton of life up here near the water surface. There's a lot of action, and I'm very excited to reveal a certain new species that may be living inside. But first, let's look above the surface of the water. Up here we have spike rush, which has grown up out of the water and pressed against the glass. You've seen it do that a few times in some of my recent builds. I love that plant, it's crazy. Uh, just growing on the glass like this. But we also see a number of our little water mites up here. Every little black speck is an arachnid water mite related to spiders and ticks. And they are living in here, feeding on the spike rush. It's really interesting. You would assume that so many water mites, they've all been breeding in here for like five years. You would assume that so many of them would eventually, you know, kill all of the plants and cause mass devastation. But instead, it looks like they have some evolutionary advantage at work here. Because if you imagine them living in a pond out in the woods somewhere, if they ate all of the plants in their pond, they would die. They would starve. And I imagine that's happened repeatedly in the distant past leaving us with water mites that are a bit more balanced uh, with our plant life. That's just a theory, but yes, they are breeding in here. There are quite a few, and I don't see any damaged plants. So I believe they are unknowingly working in a balanced way with the amount of plant material they can feed on. As far as I know, those water mites will pierce one of the plants, and they will take a little bit of its, uh, its juices, we'll say, and use that as a food source. And uh, yeah, I guess if uh, done in moderation, it might not harm the spike rush very much. I think that's really cool. Now looking a little lower in the tank, just above or just below the water level, we see our loyal little ostracods in here scooting around. Uh, my same little zebra striped ostracods that we've been talking about a lot this year. 
but you also see a few other little creatures in here moving in a slightly different manner. And at first I thought they might have been copepods. We have copepods in many of our aquariums. Uh, but after studying them and getting the best shots that I could with my current filming equipment, I believe those are Daphnia. I do think that we have Daphnia, ostracods, and water mites living in here. And even if I'm wrong about the Daphnia uh, identification, <laughs> even if they are something else, I can say for certain that we have three different types of arthropods that are living in a sealed jar. They're living in here with a healthy breeding population. Apparently they have plenty of food, plenty of oxygen, and they're able to sustain large populations over the course of five years. I think that's really cool. And I'm curious where this tank goes into the future. Now, unfortunately, with my current equipment, I cannot get a very good shot of these little guys. I'll try to include another shot cleaned up a little bit uh, towards the end of the video. But uh, maybe one of you experts out there can help me. Are these Daphnia? But the tank itself is amazing. And looking a little deeper, we see a lot of our moss in here as well. We have a very healthy amount of spike rush that seems to have channeled most of its energy towards the top of the tank. Whereas our moss has been growing slow and steady down here near the bottom. That growth spurt that we had that caused a lot of wilting and dead plant material is completely gone. We've created a self-cleaning sealed ecosphere. And I think that is amazing, you guys. Uh, hopefully you do see why I've been messing with spike rush in that moss so much lately. It's because uh, it's the very same spike rush and semi-aquatic moss seen in this project. This is a huge proof of concept showing that I'm not crazy. <laughs> this can be done. And in fact, I think that we can improve upon this quite a bit. Now, only like 300 people watched the build video for this aquarium, which, you know, it was a long time ago. We only had like 10 subscribers. And I remember all of you. I love you guys. But uh, yeah, that was way back. And it's okay. You know, I was re-watching the build video for this specific video, getting ready for this, and it was really, really bad. <laughs> I might have to take it down. I don't know. But watching the build video, we set this up in a very simple way with a little bit of dirt, a little bit of screen mesh, a little bit of sand, and, of course, our plants. I actually included some different plants in here at first, and they were all completely consumed. <laughs> They wilted, they failed, they died, and they were eaten. And over time, that created a strong mulm layer down here in the bottom, which has been whittled down to almost nothing. Now, I didn't get any shots of our aquatic worms today, or over the past week of filming on this tank, but that's okay. There's, it's very likely that I must have bumped the jar a few times, and they may have gone into hiding. Their population may have diminished a great deal with that mulm being reduced so much. Uh, you know, there may be just a few in here waiting for something to change for them to flourish once again. We'll have to wait and see. But the jar is beautiful. This shot of the moss down here and near the bottom is amazing. If I could grow this moss in a sealed jar for years, you know, I think that would be a, a great thing. I would order something like that off the internet. You know, a one-quart sealed moss aquarium that'll never get algae covered all over everything. It'll never wilt or fail. It might do it a little bit and come back. You know, I think it's amazing. I think that would be a great thing. And, uh, you know, when I was a kid, they told me that this type of thing wasn't possible. They said that every sealed system will eventually fail, and that's very true. That's, of course, that's true. But I believe through proper setup and uh, careful planning, we can extend that, that end point. We can push it way into the future. This is a tank which has been sealed for five years, and it is displaying no signs of failure. So I believe that we can push that failure date way back, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, who knows? These tanks may even outlive me one day, which is crazy. <laughs> I need to set up an inheritance. Who wants to take care of my nano aquariums after I'm gone? Oh, it's kind of morbid. <laughs> but it's something to think about, you know, these projects, we're pushing into the future. And that's why I'm relying so heavily on this spike rush in our semi-aquatic moss. I know that it can do the job. The question is how to get there, how to include the right amount of materials that can ensure a long-term plant growth and health, 
without poisoning the water and also allowing our little friends to come in and do their job of cleaning up the situation and, of course, inhabiting the aquarium, providing a little action, a little life, a little love <laughs> to our build. So in the future, you guys, I think that we're going to mimic this exact tank in another sealed nano aquarium, and I want to try to replicate it. I might have to mix it up a little bit. I can't help it. But I think that we can build upon the success of this project. And, uh, you know, one day in the future, I would like to share ecospheres. I'd like to give them away to friends and family. But I want to make sure that I can guarantee success. You know, like, yes, take this home, put it in an east-facing window in your living room or whatever, and I can promise you that it'll live for 10 years, and you can pick it up and look at it. Your kids can examine it. Things like that. You know, that's very important to me. Now, these little guys, these little Daphnia, ah, oh, they're so hard to film. They're so hard for me to get a close-up with my current equipment. This glass also has a little bit of material in it, which obscures vision, so that doesn't help much. But hopefully one of you experts at home can help me. Are these Daphnia? Are they a type of water mite that is maybe more active than what I'm used to? I don't think they're copepods. Obviously the little seed guys are my seed shrimp. But these are the things that I am wondering about. Yeah. You know, guys, during the course of filming this video, I was thinking about the old days, you know, in high school, biology class. Like, imagine how cool it would be, even before that fifth or sixth grade. Imagine you show up and the teacher has some some Daphnia cultures and some seed shrimps, and everybody gets a jar, and they get to assemble their little ecosphere and then review it at the end of the school year and come up with a hypothesis and, uh, you know, theories and stuff. And I think it would be a wonderful way to teach kids I think that we need to enlighten them as to the wonders that are all around us that we don't even think about, that I wish somebody would have brought to my attention when I was a young person as well. But that's it for today, guys. Thank you. The five-year update is done. It is a beautiful tank. It's got a lot of life left for the future. Big thank you to my Patreon members and YouTube supporters. You guys are amazing.